Welcome back to the Monolith 2 microservice project with Golang series. So in the last video, we worked on the private HTTP products file, this file. And we basically created a route for getting products using the ID. And we created a function for it. Now we want to do something similar with the public uh, products.go file. So open up that file and write on top package HTTP. And in this video, we're just going to focus on this file. That is it. Okay. Import and <clears throat> an import. I know that for sure we need at least one package, which is net slash HTTP because I want to create a route and I need chai also for the, for the route. Anyhow, <clears throat> so we have a function called add routes, just like we did out here, add routes function. Okay. The add routes function takes in a router, which is your chime.mux. So I'll have to import the chai package as well. And products read model, which is of type products read model. And this function then is responsible for creating a get route for products. This means getting all products. So for the private one, it was getting one particular product with that ID. And here it's about getting all products. To get all products, you obviously need a resource because resource is what you pass out here. It's not a function, it's a method, right? And method requires a struct to be defined. So you have products resource and products read model. So products resource is what you'd have to create now. Uh, not not actually because, yeah, so they belong to the same package, right? Package HTTP, package HTTP. So product resources, products resources is something that you will already have access to. So you don't have to worry about it. But what you need is products read model which is an interface. So products read model is something that you use out here as well. I think somewhere. And you definitely are using it here in this file. So this is what we need, products read model. And <clears throat> you basically get access to all products. Products dot product comma H. Okay, so it's an interface, right? Now you want to define your product view and your price view. So you'll say type product view. And type price view. Which is again a struct. And most importantly, you'll need a function called get all, right? And it's a method. This was what you talk. So it's a method. So you'll say func p is products resource. And you'll get your get all function, which will have access to w and r. Okay. And this will function will have some sort of a definition. Now, um, I'll need one more function called price view from price. It takes P, which is price dot price, and it takes price view. And we return price view. Inside that you'll say p dot sense comma p dot currency. All right, so now uh, you know that a price has cents and the price has uh, currency as well. How do you know that? Because you've already defined price here somewhere. 
price as cents and price as currency. You already know that. So this is why we are able to basically return price view. And this is why it needs cents and currency. All right. <clears throat> so um, so let's do one thing. We'll take products resource. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is one small issue here. The products resource here is not the same as the products resource here. So I was thinking I won't have to create a new struct called products resource here because, because it's the same package, right? So we'll be able to access it. But as it turns out, the products resource here is going to uh, basically be a deed model, right? So I'll have to create it again. So I'll say type products resource struct read model products read model. So read model, it has something called a read model, which is of type products read model, which is basically an interface. Got it. Now, uh, product view and price view. So this function, right? The price view from price, it returns a price view. As you can see, it accepts price, which is basically belong belonging to the price package and the price uh, with the capital P is the struct, right? So it returns a price view. To return a price view, it's going to have cents, right? As you can see here, cents with capital C and currency with capital C. The cents is uint and currency is string. And for uint, you'll say, now we're working with um, routes here. So routes, when we work with routes, when you interact with routes, you use curl or you use postman, and in both cases, you'll pass JSON uh, to the routes. But Golang does not understand JSON and so on. So we'll have to tell Golang that, hey, you understand the struct, you understand you and string, but uh, these are the fields that you work with, but these are the fields that uh, will be there in the, sorry, it's sense and currency. These are the fields that will be there in the JSON. Similarly, for product view as well, we'll have ID, we'll have name, all the same things, description and price. Now price, it's interesting to note is price is basically this price view that we've just defined out here. So it's a price view. And ID is basically a string name is a string and description is again a string so id is json id name is json name and description is json description price view is json price This is price view, right? So we've done all the uh, groundwork. We've created our product view, created our price view, created products resource struct, products read model, and created, and the most important thing is routes. So everything is happening basically around the routes, right? So we have the groundwork, and now we have all the things required to work on our get all function, which is basically the point of this whole video and this whole uh, file, basically, right? The get all function which helps you to get all the records from the memory, right? By memory, I mean the repo, which is an interface, which basically connects to the memory at the back end. So products is the variable that I'll need. And products resource will have read model and will have all products, right? See, it has a read model, which has, and the read model in turn has all products. Make sense? And we'll handle the error here itself. So if error is not equal to nil, we'll render dot render w comma r comma common http dot error internal. In the last video, we checked if we had created this function. We've already created this function in the common folder. We've already created this function. 
I'm going to return from here. And let's create a slice product view. Now, when you get all the products from the memory or the database, you'll have a lot of products. And you can't just, uh, you know, return one single product because you have multiple products, obviously. So you'll have to store that in something like a slice because slice can hold multiple different structs, right? Uh, like structs, but multiple, many structs of the same type. <clears throat> so this is what you're, so this is why you'll have to define a variable called view, which is product view. And product view, as you know, is basically ID name price. And you'll range over the products. Okay, the products that you find from all products, you'll range over them. And the correct way to do it is for product. And product is the value and this is the iterator. We don't need the iterator, so we just need each value one by one. So we'll go across all the values one by one. View is equal to going to be append, right? So it's a slice, so you can use the append function to keep appending one thing, things one by one. So you'll take whatever is already there in the view, plus you'll add a new product view, which will have, sorry, something else happened here. This is why I hate using extensions and auto correction, but uh, a lot of the people that watch my um, YouTube, they have asked me to use extensions, so this is why I have to use it, okay? But I hate using extensions. This is the reason, you can see the reason right now. Um, I think the brackets are equal. Okay, so out here the product view is string. You have product dot id. The comma will be out here. Comma. You will have product dot name. Comma. You will have product dot description comma price view from price it's product dot price and at the end you want to return from this function a response w comma r comma view. nice all right, so this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to basically say that uh, you have a main function called get all, and to get all the values from the database or the memory, you're going to do have to do a couple of things, right? And what you're returning here uh, from this function is basically view, which is a slice of multiple product views. Each product has an ID, name, description, and price. Price being a price view which has sense and currencies, right? So my camera has switched off, it seems, due to some battery issues. I've run off battery juice in the camera. But anyhow, this is what I want to show you. This is the uh, file that we want to work on. This is the function that we want to create. So we're done with our uh, private products.go file and our public products.go file. And you've seen two routes being implemented. One is the products, get products by ID, and one is the get all products route. So um, with this, I want to end this video. In the next video, we'll take care of all the other remaining remaining parts. So I'll have to see which parts we'll tackle first. Uh, but a lot of the important critical stuff we've taken care of because we are able to work with our memory, we're able to work with products and prices and all of those things, right? So do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.